Colin, you know the battalion plan now, which is to mount a dawn attack tomorrow morning on the motor rifle company in that village yes. with the necessary night approach march this evening. And you know that last night we wrecked three possible routes, and I've opted to go for the one that Corporal Baker wrecked, and I think he's spoken to you about it. Yes, he has. The problem, as you know, is that in the FUP that we've picked as a result of that route, there's an enemy standing patrol, or appears to be one. Yeah. I want you to lead tonight a fighting patrol in advance of our approach to take out that enemy standing patrol right. before moving on to secure the start line for the attack. Clear? Okay, so I see on the map, you want to show me on the ground exactly yeah. where it is? The first thing the patrol commander will do is work out a route to the objective. He'll do this in conjunction with the corporal who'd wrecked the area the night before, because his first-hand experience of the ground could be an invaluable addition to existing intelligence. Which is open gap? Yes, Zane. Roughly 50 by 50. Yeah, got it. That's the minefield. Just that gap. Yeah. The more precise the preparation now, the less you leave to chance later when it matters. OK, now, the route you took, I see is approached, it's a covered approach, but it's fairly narrow. What I'm thinking about doing is going on a wider arc to the left and approaching what would mean us coming round the minefield and approaching into the re-entrant above the valley we're talking about, which yeah. leads into our actual route up to the FUP. The model will be constructed by the recce patrol commander because his knowledge of the objective is much more detailed than anything you can get from a map or even an aerial photograph. While he's doing that, the fighting patrol commander register. will register his route with a battalion intelligence uh, officer. I might saw my map here. As you can see, it's basically following the route which the battalion will take tonight. Um, I'm going to avoid the large part of the wood because I want to get there quietly and it's going to take me a long time to crash through there. Fine. So I'm going to go around this way here and avoid the area where Corporal Baker found the minefield last night. I'll go away to the south of that, OK? That's basically the changes, and they're the actual bearings to each leg on there. Grand Colin, are you, in fact, going to consider using uh, the DF Zulu Tango 1003? Yeah, we want to use it. Uh, the FOO is going to call that down as the assault goes in. The attack is basically very simple in concept. The patrol's final RV will be just out of sight of the objective and of the enemy. The cover group will move out first and take up position. 20 minutes later, the assault group will move out and form up on their start line, leaving two men to guard the FRV. 10 minutes later, the FOO will call down DF on the main enemy position behind their standing patrol. When the DF lands, the cover group will put down suppressive fire to cover the assault group as it goes in and clears the enemy position. When the cover group fire, we will get up and move across our start line. The patrol commander's next job is to outline his plans to his NCOs and to brief them on the requirements for the operation, the number of men involved and any special equipment they may require. GPMG, sir? Yes. Take the three GPMGs from company headquarters. Yeah. They know about that. We need to send people to pick them up. With the, each gun, there'll be 400 rounds. The patrol briefing is crucial. It must be clear, detailed and specific. It must cover every part of the operation the patrol's mission, the route out to the objective, the RVs and emergency RVs on each leg of that route, emergency procedures, radio procedures, everything that is relevant to the operation. Every man must know and understand the part he has to play. The FRV guard, the cover group, the assault group, the FOO, the forward observation officer, and the man who will have to provide support if the patrol runs into trouble, the standby patrol commander. Below the ridge. Well, the main area we're concerned with tonight is the objective area, which is this hollow wood here. Call Baker. You stand up. When it comes to the objective itself, the fighting patrol commander will hand over to the recce patrol commander to describe the terrain in detail. Notice the prominent track with a hedgerow on either side, coming through, coming through the hollow, through the objective, out through the other side. The wood is roughly 200 meters either side. There are three enemy trenches situated left corner of the wood. Six strong, they have trip flares out, situated right corner of the trench, one from the hollow, leading up to the wood line. Before we move out to us, we want to make sure all the equipment we've got is ready. Uh, the guns are prepared, the spyglass has got a new battery in, the radio has got new batteries in, etc. Well, they're going to move out of here to the rehearsal area, which is the open ground you know behind us over there. We're going to concentrate in our action in the FRV and the action on the objective. Those are the meat of the patrol. Right, lads, 20 minutes after the cover group move off, I will then lead you off 
into our FUP for the assault. We'll rehearse that now. Time spent in preparation is always time well spent, often lives well saved, sometimes even the difference between success and failure. With so many individual tasks to be coordinated and synchronized, the action on the objective must be rehearsed in every detail and every man briefed individually. Okay, the left of Ark is a prominent green tree you can see over there. Your right of Ark, if you look in the base of the valley, is that prominent dirt patch. When I say go, Corporal Baker, you take the left hand trench. Corporal Davis, you take the right hand trench, then go firm. Once you're firm, then put suppressive fire onto the third trench. When that's happening, Corporal Baker, you move and take the third trench. Then go firm, that's it. Romeo 10. Fire on Zulu Tango 1003. Over. Shot 15. Okay, remember what's happening. We've now fired around 15 seconds later. At land, we then fire. 13, 14, 15. Fire! Let's go. The orders, the timings, the actions, everything must be rehearsed by day and, if possible, by night until every man knows what is expected of him and what he should expect of everyone else. OK, watching them coming in. Switch light! In between the preparations for this specific operation, the patrol must be fed and watered, and all the other routine preparations of a fighting unit in the field must somehow be fitted in. In theory, a unit should have all the hours of daylight to prepare for a fighting patrol, but it rarely works out that way. There's always too much to do and too little time to do it. The timeout is 20.30. Leg one is the route from the patrol base along the cleared path up to where the standing patrol were. We move out of the wood, breaking into arrowhead formation, the assault group leading. The assault group will be an arrowhead, cover group in file behind. We'll move down into the low ground, follow the ridge line on our left-hand side, and move along the side of the valley to the first RV, the distance of 800 metres. In the same formation, then, we'll carry along the same side of the valley, the south side, to our second RV, distance 600 metres. When we get into the RV, we'll all go into all-round defence. I will go at 12 o'clock. Call Davis, you go on my right. Your fire team will go round to three o'clock. Call Baker's fire team will go round to nine o'clock. And Sergeant Arnold, you'll go at three o'clock. Your cover group will move round through six up to nine. There are designated RVs at the end of each leg of the route and emergency RVs at various points along those legs where the patrol can regroup if it runs into trouble. While the rest of the patrol keep a listening watch, the patrol commander will have the ground ahead checked out, both with the thermal imager and with his own individual weapon sight. If everything is clear, they'll move out, perhaps in a different direction, but always in the same order as they moved in. Leg three. From the second RV, forming into the same formation, now we'll have to close the arrowhead here as we come across into the gully. We'll move up the gully to our third RV, by the edge of the wood. Distance, 750 metres. We will then move from RV3, break into file formation with the assault group in the first half of the file and the cover group in the second half of the file. They'll move in slow bounds, stopping often, looking, listening. And when they move on again, it will be with the utmost caution Wooded areas are not ideal for patrolling. It's difficult to maintain formation in them and almost impossible to move through them in silence. In the event, you may be forced to keep to the rides and fire breaks, even though these are the very places where an alert enemy might be expected to set up an ambush or lay a machine gun on a fixed line. Corporal Baker and Corporal Braybrook will be forward scouts. You will lead us through in fire formation along the ride to our fourth RV, which is on the far side of the wood where again we'll go into our RV procedure. Distance, 600 metres. Myself, radio operator, and the FRV guard will then move out along the route 
to the FRV. We go up to the FRV, it will check it from a safe distance out. When happy it's clear, we'll then move in. Now the ground is fairly open, so we'll cover it by covering each other as we move across it. I will move with the radio operator, the FRV guard, you move together. Once we're in the FRV, we'll check it's clear. I will then send the FRV guard to look towards the enemy objective and see whether there's any enemy in the vicinity. The FRV guard will then move to 12 o'clock position and observe towards the enemy objective. When you're happy, then Court McConnell, you move down to the 6 o'clock position. Pardo, you remain where you are. I will then lead the radio operator back to pick up the rest of the patrol. Now, I'm going to come back through 12 o'clock, so Probert, you look out for us coming back in, because we're going to come back in through you again. We'll then lead off in exactly the same way as for any normal RV procedure, and I'll lead you into the FRV. The route, then, is simply following the area of the scrub. We'll keep in fire formation for this, because we don't want to open out and we'll move straight into the FRV, taking up exactly the same positions as for a normal RV. We'll then wait and listen until my order to move on to the next phase. The next phase is the close recce of the objective. Since he's familiar with the terrain, the previous night's recce patrol commander will take the patrol commander and his radio operator and the platoon sergeant, who will be in command of the cover group, to a suitable point from which to observe the enemy position. They'll want to check that the enemy are still in the same place, in the same strength, and deployed in the same way as the night before. They'll want to familiarize themselves with the terrain, the patrol commander especially. This will be the first chance he's had to look at the ground at first hand, and he'll be anxious to see if his plan needs any last minute adjustments. The commander of the cover group will want to see exactly where he should put down suppressive fire, and work out in advance the critical point in the assault when he will have to switch fire. But they can't afford to dwell too long on this recce, not just for fear of discovery by the enemy, but also to avoid keeping our own troops hanging around in the dark. When I give Sergeant Arnold the go, he moves out of the FRV and has 20 minutes in which to lead his cover group across the track and into the south side of the wood into his final position. If the cover group aren't going to be in position in time, then let us know on the radio. But I want you firm before we move in and you've got 20 minutes in which to get firm. Okay, on the left of that is the prominent tree you can see on the skyline there. See, so right of that is the gap between the two large bushes. So, priority target number two trench. Switch right target to the large clump of bushes over there. So Understand? Yes, that's so good. Twenty minutes later, the assault group will leave the FRV position. We move straight up the wood to our start line. We follow the hedge line round into the gully, which leads us up to the wood. Now we move through the area of the beech trees, and where the trees end, we line up in our assault formation on our start line. Corporal Davis on the right, Corporal Baker on the left. I'll be in the middle with a radio operator behind me. Ten minutes after that, the FOO will then bring down the DF onto the main enemy position as the distraction plan. Romeo 10, fire on Zulu Tango 1003, over. When that DF lands, Sergeant Arnold will then give the order for the cover group to open fire. Shot one five. Fire! The cover group opening fire 
is a signal for the assault group to get up and assault the enemy position. The assault itself will be as rehearsed, working to the standard fire and manoeuvre routines. Two four-man fire teams, each team moving in pairs, each pair covering the others move forward, while the cover group puts down suppressive fire with everything they've got. As the assault group nears the first trenches, the covering fire is switched to the secondary targets. Once the position has been cleared, the patrol will secure the FUP area and mark the start line for the battalion attack. By first light, the battalion should be firm on their objective and the patrol can move forward to rejoin them. The fighting patrol is almost invariably tasked to carry out one specific and apparently isolated act of aggression. But like every other sort of patrol, it has to be carefully planned, properly prepared and resolutely executed. Successful patrolling is the cornerstone of almost every military operation and may well make a decisive contribution to its ultimate success. <laughs>